First things first, Orchid Ninjas, I'm going to try and be respectful, <laughs> but you've got the snoop cam going and well, the view might be a little bit off putting. So that's a warning to all Orchid Ninjas that have access to the snoop cam. My apologies. And if you don't have access to the snoop cam, you are spared the view. <laughs> But if you want access to the Snoop Cam, consider joining the channel and become a member and subsequently an Orchid Ninja and get access to the Snoop Cam. Okay, I've got work to do and I hope that you enjoy the video. It's good to have you on the other side of the intro. Thank you so much for clicking on the video, for staying. I appreciate your time. Ah, the time has come for me to do something I don't look forward to, and that is to bring my big angraecums inside. Even though the days are still beautiful and sunny, the nights, well, I've been using a blanket to protect them, but I'm getting a little uncomfortable. I'm a little bit anxious about those nights, even with a woolly blanket. So <laughs> for peace of mind, I'm going to bring them in today. And I may do something different this year, depending on how things go. I may actually bring them in and out on occasions throughout the winter of 23 and 24. So, as I always do, I start with the easy one first, and that is to take out the Ungraecum sesquipedale variety bossery, because the roots are not as generous on this one, and it builds up my courage. <laughs> Again, Snoop Cam viewers, my apologies. There's no other way I can do this. I've had root branching on my bossery, but I can see that, you know, birds think it's worms. So they've chomped on all the branching root tips, which is a shame, but hey. All right, I'm going to put that aside and we'll go check it out after I get the Crestwood Tomorrow Star. Okay, all I have to do is reverse what I did earlier this year. That is all. And not rush it. Stay focused. All right, there's a vine there that's got to go. Oh, it's nice. We have some root tips. It's looking good so far. Let me be careful. I can see a branch that you can't see. Maybe you can see it's right here several branchings. Now, I can't carry all the root tips over through the winter months, but you know, at the beginning, I always try to do my best to keep them active for as long as possible. Oh, that was easier than I thought. Woohoo! I don't like wiping the leaves of these orchids, but they are very dusty. I haven't really done anything to them for the entire glam camping season that they were outside. So low light levels coming up might as well take the dust off and help them along a little bit. So I'm pleased about the branching on the roots. Yeah, I know I say that with a little bit of, yeah, don't sound convincing at all, but it was a very high humidity summer. So these roots in my climate normally don't have the opportunity to branch because of my very dry, normally dry climate. And that was not the case this summer. I had consistent humidity. Huh. 
over 75% for three months of the year. And yeah, that is what they like. And that is why they live up against the hedge like that and don't get moved once they're outside because I can keep that hedge nice and humid. I didn't have to do as much this year. The thing is that I have one or two viable roots in the pot. That is all, and that's what I'm concerned about. And it was nice to see the branching. <laughs> Let me qualify that. I'm concerned with the fact that this orchid clearly doesn't have the capability of growing roots into the pot now that she's growing bigger and bigger. So it's gonna be more and more difficult to be able to water her. But the roots that I have in the pot, some of them are viable and they are my saving grace. There's one that is not viable anymore, that is obvious, but I'm not gonna fiddle around and try to remove that, there's no need. The branching was epic on one of the roots. Unfortunately, the birds also consider that part of their maybe food source because they think that it is <laughs> worms. And you can excuse them, forgive them that they think that. They do look a bit like worms. Anyway, so once those root tips were damaged, they didn't continue growing, but it's nice we had some branching that I could enjoy throughout the season until the birds got to the tips. One thing I really enjoy seeing is how when there is a root tip with very little light, it is almost pale green, almost white. It was deep, deep in the hedge. And by comparison, the roots that had more light are a gorgeous emerald. Another little recap of this orchid from the glam camping before and after is that it grew one new main root from the stem and the other main root from last year, at least it continued growing. And here you can see the spike of 2022. This would be 2023 if they both make it. Like I said, I would like to move them in and out, but now of course it's a problem if they start budding up, I can't move them. I'm just hoping they will bloom for us in the growth space, my winter holding space. And the growth that we've achieved this year is what you can see right here. So the older leaves, they extended. This being the leaf that got a little bit of cold damage or something really strange happened to it when I first brought it out. It was much, much smaller. Probably still too tender. Anyway, so we've got all of this of the 2023 season. I'm gonna take it inside and then we're going to address the Crestwood. I would like to try and get rid of this leaf. <sighs> I wanted all of it from the base and everything, but it's too tough. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, so same procedure here. We're gonna just clean the leaves a little bit. As you can see, the direction of growth is going away from us because now I've got the orchid turned around. The roots were in the hedge. And this orchid for the first time in two years produced two spikes. Unfortunately, one broke. I don't know if that was me. With the woolly blanket, I was extremely cautious or so I thought in how I put the blanket on and how I took it off. I even shook out the blanket that morning to see if the spike got caught in it, see if the piece that fell off, broke off, would fall out of the blanket, but it didn't. So I searched the area around this orchid to see if I could find it. Maybe it was a bird, also assuming there was another worm. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, whatever happened, it did not go for the second spike. So maybe we'll still get some blooms from Crestwood and maybe in time for Christmas because both orchids are spiking two months, let's say, okay, let's say six weeks earlier than they normally do. Do. And that kind of surprised me as well. The length of the roots, yeah, those are scary. I'm gonna have to be, again, tiptoeing around in my growth space, be careful, try and keep them active for as long as possible, but they are scary, scary long, which is nice. 
And of course, we've got some beautiful active root tips, the ones that branched and went deep into the hedge. Well, they are also a nice pale color, whereas the ones that were closer to the light, they are that beautiful kryptonite green that I love so much. I can see that some roots didn't fare so well. They're shriveling, but I'm not cutting anything off at this stage because I will see what happens throughout the winter, which roots die off and which ones will make it through. And then spring 2024, we can have a good look to see and trim roots as and where needs be. Now let's assess even from this angle, the growth. So you see where the spikes are coming out. The other spike is in here, but of course it's cut off at the other side, knocked off. It's a clean cut, which is astonishing. And the entire growth of this orchid for this year is this point up here. It doesn't look like it because she is quite a slow grower during the winter, but it was this leaf here that I was trying to support with the Velcro strip that I got from Trisha's Orchid Life back in the day because it was coming out of the winter and it was a little bit floppy and the breeze, I didn't want to break it. So we have some wonderful growth going up and unfortunately, we have lost some leaves during the season. Right out of the gate, the first three weeks, I lost three leaves at the base. Oh well, c'est la vie. It is growing a little cakey down here, a side shoot. That is what they do very, very slowly. Probably will be blooming size in about 10 years. <laughs> but it's still alive and it produced its own roots as well this season. So at least that one hasn't been messed with, which is awesome. I'm very pleased about that. Now, let's get the beast inside. Oh boy, wish us luck. Okay, <laughs> normally that water tray is there for the long roots to reach so that they can hydrate for as long as possible. Also to boost the humidity, but you can see the box that I have in front of this cabinet, excuse the exposure, let me change that. That is there so that I don't brush against the roots. Now, the roots have grown so long that now they are in the box. There's nothing I can do about it down there. <laughs> I just hope that they will be okay. Unfortunately, I don't have that many roots anymore in that water reservoir. What I just poured in was a very weak solution of Bactofil with some fertilizer. I think we're only at 300 parts per million at the moment. That is okay. I don't exactly want the Belayman to get all brown, but it is what it is at this point in time. So of course, there are some brand new roots in this water now, and I'm not entirely sure how long they will take to hydrate. They are just responding like a Teflon effect. There is absolutely no active absorption of the water. Maybe eventually they will. I'm going to be risking staining my velamen, but this is all a risk anyway. They shouldn't be inside. They shouldn't be contained like this. They would be much, much happier outdoors. So I have the exposure way up, but <laughs> at least we're not just seeing some black shadows. That's why the background is blinded out. But you can see somewhat how far now the sun is coming into the grow space. The thing is, it is not for long. So yes, they do get some sun, some light on a sunny day, of course, has to be a sunny day, but on a very dull day. And that could at least take a week to 10 days for dull days to be back to back. They are pretty much in the dark. I will leave a link to a video in the description about my conditions in case you are wondering because you can see light fixtures, etc., etc. I won't elaborate on that in this video. So check out that video if you would like to know what I am talking about, about my orchids being in the dark. The way they are facing now is towards the light. Clearly, the only thing different is that the roots obviously are towards us now. So yes, the spikes still have the same direction of growth. That applies to the crestwood as well as the bossery. Once the buds have opened, if we get to that point, then I turn the orchids around, have them face us so that we can enjoy the blooms. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, this is not a one and done. If they bloom out, there is more work to be done. I just want to show you one more thing if you're still here. Thank you so, so much. Give this video a like. I didn't break anything and that, in my opinion, warrants a like and we need all the encouragement for the months ahead for not just these two orchids, but every orchid that has to be inside from here on in. Anywho, let me just show you something. That is the branching root of the bossery. <clears throat> me no likey. So I'm gonna see if I can reach over and bring her a little bit closer to the crest wood. Did I just hear a crack? <laughs> After all this, shouldn't discourage you from liking the video. You see this root here? That is a path that I have to take a lot because I have to get in there to get an orchid so I can get them out. I need to protect them a little bit more from that. Now I've got roots leaning on, <laughs> on the padding <clears throat> and they're active root tips. So I may need to get a little dish for those and see if we can't just keep them going for a little bit longer. Oh well. Anyway, this is it. I can fuss with this and I don't have to waste your time. You get the picture. This is without the exposure. This is real light as it is at this point in time. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I thank you for watching to the end. I appreciate you so, so much. It's difficult for me to express. And I hope that the Snoop Cam viewers <laughs> didn't get a blackout. <laughs> Anyway, seeing as you've watched to the end, it gives me the opportunity to wish you a beautiful day, but I attach a condition to that. I always ask you to please stay safe. Take care. Bye.